Cambodia is emerging from decades of civil war and isolation, helped by government and international programs aimed at reducing poverty. International donors this year alone have pledged more than $600 million to help the country. However, much still needs to be done. This is still a very poor country. We've just done a new poverty assessment where we find that even though poverty has come down quite significantly in the last decade, still a third of the country's people are very poor. The World Bank coordinates much of Cambodia's aid plan. By focusing on empowering the poorest people and working with the government, private sector and civil society, assistance efforts are beginning to yield results. At a poor community on the outskirts of Phnom Penh, people are receiving clean running water for the first time. With World Bank and government financing, the Phnom Penh Water Supply Authority was able to provide tap water for the Samaki settlement earlier this year. The authority plans to expand the supply of safe water to around 30 targeted towns and peri-urban communities and improve sanitation services by the end of the project in 2008. It's also providing special payment plans to help poor people meet the water costs. Affordable running water has dramatically improved people's lives, helping to alleviate poverty and reduce disease. Before their taps were installed, the people of Samaki had to spend hours each day hauling water from a polluted pond almost a kilometer away from their homes or buy it from vendors. The housework is much easier now that we have clean water and we now have enough water for washing, cooking and bathing. When we had to pull the water from far away, it was very, very difficult. In 2002, the Water Authority reopened the Chiroi Changwa water treatment plant, which had been idle for many years in desperate need of repair. It currently treats 65,000 cubic meters of water a day pumped in from the Mekong River, and there are plans to expand the capacity to 130,000 cubic meters. Pipes are being laid throughout Phnom Penh, and the Water Authority aims to expand production capacity to meet the ever-increasing demand for safe water. Almost 70% of Phnom Penh's population is connected to the distribution network, which provides water that meets WHO standards, compared to just 20% in 1993. People now have cleaner water at a cheaper price. Not only do they get cheaper, cleaner water, but they also have access to it 24 hours a day. The water is there whenever they want it. Under a hot, dry season sun, villagers of Sambo Commune in Kompong Cham province help government officials measure plots of land among the rice paddies. The brutal Khmer Rouge abolished private property ownership and destroyed land titles during its reign in the 1970s. When the regime fell, people settled and farmed on whatever plots they could find without any proof of ownership. Now, the Ministry of Land Management, Urban Planning and Construction is implementing a new surveying and measuring system which guarantees people's legal ownership of land that they can use for farming, housing or business in rural and urban areas. The Land Management and Administration Project or LMAP, has also put in place mechanisms for resolving property disputes. In areas which are being titled, disputes are settled by LMAP field officers. In those which are not yet being titled, they can be lodged with administrative review bodies which operate at district, province and national levels. With secure title, villagers can borrow against their property's equity to finance their farms, businesses and other interests through mortgages and various credit arrangements. It reduces land conflicts and people can also feel confident and secure that the land belongs to them. Du Ro has lived in this area for most of his life. 
Like millions of people, he was sent to a labor camp during the Khmer Rouge's reign, but he survived to return to Sambo. Today, at the age of 64, Du Ro is becoming a landowner for the first time. I feel very happy that I can finally own my own land, delighted that I can take full possession. It's an exciting day, too, for 45-year-old Porn Met, who moved here in 1983 after working in a labor camp in the late 1970s. Porn Met and her family have already made plans now that she has secured a land title. I want to cultivate the land, to plant rice for us to eat. I may also use my land to apply for a loan. Now that we have ownership, we can ask the bank for money. It will be so much easier. <laughs> By providing the security of land ownership, we are also encouraging investment in the land market. The system also reduces conflicts and leads to transparency in the land market. In the Vihir Luong commune, work is underway to build a canal, part of an irrigation system which will help local rice farmers. The canal construction was proposed by the farmers themselves, and was included in the commune development plan for Vihir Luong. Supported by the World Bank through the National SELA program, newly elected local governments have access to finance and technical support, enabling communities to assess their own needs and decide which projects to prioritize with their allocated budgets. Our council's vision for the future is to continue building infrastructure for the people as well as trying to improve their health care. By building this canal, for example, we can store water for dry season crops cultivation. Besides rice, we'll be able to grow cucumbers, corn and watermelon. We want to turn it into a green area. Council members at nearby Da commune meet to discuss their community's infrastructure needs. Before the election of commune councils in 2002, decision-making remained in the hands of just a few leaders and meetings like this never happened. Now, as well as giving villagers a say, projects are properly planned. Planned development is important because when the community agrees on a plan, it benefits everyone. Like this road, first we discussed it, then we bid for it, and now it helps the people. They can transport their crops from farm to market. While the project is ongoing, there are already signs of progress. From the feedback we have sought from experts and independent advisers, the project is becoming a very successful one. It has given local people their basic needs, such as water, school buildings, roads and things like that. The World Bank and its partners will continue to develop and repeat projects like water supply, land measuring and titling, and rural investment in local governance, with the aim of empowering poor people and giving them a voice. This is a very explicit part of our new country assistance strategy. You know, we believe that ultimately change in this country will come from poor people themselves demanding services of government and demanding better governance as well and that if they are not empowered to do that, then donors can only do so much. It's going to be a long-term process, and we're mainstreaming that in all the projects that we're doing, but also we're going to do some new self-standing projects with just with that explicit aim of empowering people by bringing them together in groups, by you know, um, uh, giving them more voice and um, making these accountability institutions work better in this country. It's a long-term commitment but one that is gradually bringing hope to a country that has been through so much.